Welcome to Unsung Heroes. This is Chrissy Morales with the beautiful Latoya Dove. Hi, Hello. welcome. <laughs> Thank we you. are so twinning today. Yes. Twins. Curls in pink and pink suits. We, yes. We're just ready. We're ready to <laughs> conquer the world. <laughs> So we're excited to have you here because you just started your own podcast. I did. <laughs> Tell me more about it. Um, so the podcast is called Bill's Curls and Colored Girls. Mm -hmm. um, basically, how it all started was I am really into podcasts. I listen to them all the time. Mm -hmm. And from listening to them, I was like, you know what? I think that I could do that. And I always found myself wanting to jump into the conversations mm -hmm. and be a part of the podcast. Mm -hmm. So um, earlier this year, I decided that I was going to start my own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through brainstorming, help from friends and family, came up with the title Bill's Curls and Colored Girls. I love it. Which basically is all the things that are, like, are important to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, paying my bills. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important for yes. everybody. <laughs> As, like, a new adult, <laughs> trying to adult, uh -huh. so those are things that start to become important. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super into natural hair care and yes. embracing my curly hair. And you have beautiful curls. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And then the colored girls part is I am all about empowering women of color, specifically uh -huh. black women. Uh -huh. So all of that meshed together, uh -huh. came up with that title. Um, actually, my boyfriend like helped me because he's really good at like mm -hmm. brainstorming ideas. Mm -hmm. And then the premise of the podcast is basically it's challenging the expectations that are put on millennials specifically. Right. I noticed through my friend groups and my family that a lot of people were actually struggling with things like life after college and choosing mm -hmm. a career. And a mm -hmm. lot of it was societal pressures that don't necessarily need to be there. Right. So um, we talk about that on the show. Mm -hmm. I have different guests every episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole point is really to um, just help like foster conversation and a lot of it is also mental health related and mm -hmm. just finding mm -hmm. ways to like lead happier and healthier lives. I love that, especially with <laughs> mental health, you know? Yes. A lot of people underestimate the, just the power of mental health and how mm -hmm. important it is. Right. You know, I, I've, I've talked to so many people that, that have depression and things like that, but a lot of them are just graduating college mm -hmm. because they're, they don't have a job right out of college and right. the expectations are really set too high. Mm -hmm. Tell us how, what do you do on the show that basically helps people and guides them in the right direction? Um, so I think that the show is really great because I encourage my guests to be super honest mm -hmm. and to really just be honest, talk about exactly how you're feeling. So one of our most recent episodes was about, you know, the struggles of deciding what you want to do after you graduate college mm -hmm. or trade school mm -hmm. or high school or whatever, you know, your last form of education was. Right. Um, and, you know, honestly, sometimes like some tears are shed. People get really Aww. vulnerable yeah. because it is something that really affects you. If you go through school and, mm -hmm. you know, you're in school to prepare you to get a job mm -hmm. and then you get mm -hmm. out of school and you can't get a job, especially right. in the field that you spent all that money to study for. Mm -hmm. And there's really no explanation as to why that's not happening because mm -hmm. no one really prepares you for that. Mm -mm. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what we like dig into. And I show. love that because when I graduated Rowan University, I was expecting to have a job mm -hmm. waiting for me. Yeah. You know, that was the expectation. When you graduate high school, you're like, you go to college, mm -hmm. oh, they're going to get you a job right, right. away you know or your internship is going to get you right away what they don't tell you is that's not how it works mm -hmm. you know I, when I graduated I had no I literally had no health insurance I had no right. job and I was like severely depressed because mm -hmm. I said where am I going to go to next right. what I thought I wanted to do I didn't really want to do yes I and, to and that, that <laughs> happened and yeah. that's why so many people change their majors and things mm -hmm. like that but I encourage people, if you want to change your major, do it as many times as you want. Right. Until you feel comfortable and you feel you're in the right career path. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Yeah, totally. And when you think about it, like, people typically start college around 18, 19, 20 years old. It's mm -hmm. like, how do you expect someone whose brain isn't even fully developed yet <laughs> right. to know what they want to do with the rest of their life? <laughs> right, so right. So I think that's an added pressure. It's like you're pressured to go to college immediately after high school, mm -hmm. but then 
how do you expect a child to know what they want to do when they're 40? Right. So, yeah. and, and then people, they say, you know, like, oh, well, you're undecided. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? And that's so negative. Like, oh, you came, you went into college undecided. Right. It's like, why are we forced to have a decision right now? Right. And yeah. you're not. And, and, and those who are watching, you're not. You can mm -hmm. take your time and really, truly figure out what you love and what you love yeah. to do, you know, because it is a difficult thing to mm -hmm. do. And I'm sure that you talk about it a lot on the show. Have you had like job recruiters or anything, or are you looking into having them on the show? Um, you know, I actually haven't thought about that, but that would be a really great um, insight to provide. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people don't even know, you know, how to even build a resume. Right. Because they don't teach you that in school either. It's like, how are you, college is supposed to prepare you for a career, but the mm -hmm. fundamentals of getting into that career is not mm -hmm. taught. And I yeah. actually learned I took a career uh, course in college. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it was cool because they, they showed you how to build your resume. They broke oh, it down for you and everything. Yeah, see, I could have need, I needed but that. But <laughs> they didn't tell me was every year you have to update your resume because every year the employers are looking for a new format. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. Yeah. You know, I'm submitting my old stuff or like you'll keep a generic one. But you right. have to really tailor your yes. resume to the new job. I had to learn that too. Like I thought you could just send in the same resume to multiple companies, mm -hmm. but every mm -hmm. one has to be different, which is time consuming and then <gasps> Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> and then and then if you label it the same, it's really complicated because mm -hmm. then now you're like, "Oh, did I submit the right resume right, to the right exactly. person?" I think it helps to really like like if you had somebody there that broke down resumes and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that would be so cool to have. I actually, there. thank you for that idea. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Team Pink. Yes, Team girls. <laughs> well, we'll be right back after this short break. Hi, everybody. I am Latoya Dove. I am a natural hair influencer and type four hair advocate, as well as a podcast host of Bills, Curls, and Colored Girls. Um, you can find me at Latoya underscore Diana on Instagram, Latoya Diana on YouTube, and of course, follow my podcast, Bills, Curls, and Colored Girls on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks so much, Unsung Heroes, for having me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Chrissy Morales, or shall I say, Curly Chrissy Morales yes. and Curly Latoya, <laughs> Team Pink. Yes. <laughs> We're here having such a fun time. Tell me more about your curl movement because obviously sure. I'm totally about it and I love yes. it. <laughs> By the way, I love that you've embraced your curls. Yes. I watch you on Instagram. I'm like, yes, girl, get it. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, actually, last night I thought of you. I said, you know, I was going to straighten my hair for the show. I said, no, you know what? I'm going to embrace my beautiful curls because yes. Latoya Dove is coming on yes. and she's a curl influencer. Yes. And so I even trimmed it. I trimmed Ooh, my nice, own curl. Yeah. yeah so nice. now it's a, it has it's a little nice more fresh. Fun. Yes. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so tell me more about what you're doing with that and how you got started. Sure. Um, so let's see. Rewind back to I think about 2014, 2015 mm -hmm. is when I started my natural hair journey. I used to use um, chemical relaxers to straighten my hair. Mm. And I was in college at the time, so I wasn't really going back home for you know two to three months at a time. Mm -hmm. So as my relaxer started you know growing out and my real hair was coming in, in my roots, mm -hmm. um, I noticed it was wavy. And I was like, what is that? Because I yeah. had no idea that I had curly hair. I Wait, had, you had no idea? I had no idea. Because when I was younger, my mom always did my hair, and she always like brushed or combed it out and mm -hmm. braided it or mm -hmm. twisted it. So I never saw my natural hair straight out the shower. Like I never saw the curl. So I had no idea. I was 20 years old and had no clue I had curly hair. I hear that from a lot of people though. Mm -hmm. When I started my curl, you know, journey about, well, I've, I've always had really curly hair, mm -hmm. but then I, I like stopped and started straightening my hair kind of like you, you know, yeah. I had, my hair was starting to wave that I've heard from a lot of people that they never knew that they had mm -hmm. wavy or curly hair. Right. They just straightened it all their lives. Right. Had no clue. And it's that stereotype, I feel like, that people want you to have straight hair to mm -hmm. look professional. Yes. It's like, you know, that Eurocentric standard of beauty, you have to, you know, look a certain way. It has to be mm -hmm. sleek and mm -hmm. tamed down and put away. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, what I conformed to, like, growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was in college, I was like, what is this wavy like what is happening at the roots of my hair so i you know did research mm -hmm. and realized that i have curly hair and that mm -hmm. most ethnic people have some type of curl in their hair mm -hmm. so i decided that i was going to grow my relaxer out and 
I was like, you know, it's something's wrong with the fact that I'm 20 years old and don't know how to do my own hair. Right. Like I always went to a stylist. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do my own hair. Mm -hmm. So that's really where it all started. I started growing my hair out. Um, one thing led to another. Me and a friend of mine started a club on our college campus at Rutgers mm -hmm. called Curly in College, which is actually that's a national cute. organization. Really? And we started a chapter there. Ah, oh, that's yeah. so cool. So that was very... Um, a very important part of my journey and how mm -hmm. I got started to embrace my hair because mm -hmm. I ended up being the president of the club. Oh. And so I was like, okay, as the president of this club, I feel like mm -hmm. I need to represent it. So I, you know, did my big chop in 20, I think it was 2015 and, um, you know, wore my fro on campus. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, I had to represent this club that I was president of. Right? So that really forced me to embrace my hair and after graduating college, I'm now a natural hair influencer, I guess Yay! you could say. And it's like for who? Say. Because I know it, but I'm going to let her tell you. So, um, I, well, I had two ambassadorships this year. The first one was with Basque and Bloom, uh -huh. and I was an um, ambassador for summer of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then I still am currently a Shea Moisture ambassador Yay! right now. Yay! <laughs> that is yeah. such a big accomplishment. For sure, Especially yeah. for Shea Butter, because they're huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They um, are huge. I had applied to be an amb one of their ambassadors a couple years ago and I didn't get it mm -hmm. and you know I felt a little encouraged so the year after I didn't apply mm -hmm. and then this year I was like you know what? I'm gonna apply again and mm -hmm. I got it so yeah very excited and it helps <laughs> that you have a podcast about curls yes I love that I actually when I was doing my Instagram like curly blogs mm -hmm. I was like oh I'm thinking about you know doing that but like that it does take a lot of time when people don't understand yes. it it is easy you do the easy route by straightening your hair mm -hmm. you know or relaxing it because right. it lasts a long time curls yeah. are very delicate yes they're like another they're like a baby right like, you have to be care. very tender and care for them every day <laughs> yes yeah. uh-huh but it definitely i think um aside from just embracing my hair it mm -hmm. was um you know, just embracing who I was as a person. Yeah. Um, I am a strong believer that like God doesn't make mistakes. So if mm. he made my hair this way, then what is, you know, right. there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. So, yeah, that definitely is something that I kept in the back of my head and mm. encouraged me to, you know, keep inspiring other people to embrace their natural self. It's yeah. all connected, really. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look, when you, when you look good, you feel good. It's all yeah. flows together. Definitely. I know some of the like curl influencers who have a lot of following, like they say that, you know, mm -hmm. they were overweight at one point. Their um, hair was like all kinds of crazy. They yeah. didn't take care of their health. And then finally, when they started taking care of their, he their hair, mm -hmm. they started taking care of their skin, right. their body. Exactly, they started working yeah. out, eating better. It all just intertwines. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. Yeah, I think it's sure. important for you to feel and look beautiful. Now, for the girls out there who are just starting off, mm -hmm. because it is a scary step, yes. <laughs> tell them the basics on where to start, because people are like, where do I start? What do right. I do? Tell them the basics. I would say that YouTube is going to be your best friend, but don't let it um, take over your thoughts completely, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to looking at people who have different hair textures than you. Mm -hmm. um, that could be some inspiration for styles and things, but mm -hmm. there also could be a negative side to it where you're wanting your hair to look like theirs and everyone's DNA is different. So mm -hmm. your hair is not going to look like anyone else's but you. Right. So I think like having that in mind as they're beginning to research and try out new products is just to realize that like you, you are the only you. Your hair cannot look like someone else's. Their hair cannot look like yours. Right. Um, and I think that's one of the things that discourages a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but then once you have that down, um, I would say research a simple regimen of mm -hmm. you know shampoo, conditioner, a leave-in conditioner, mm -hmm. a deep conditioner, and then a styling product. However you like to style your hair. Right. Um, and then you know. That you can start simple there. You don't mm -hmm. have to spend a whole lot of money on it. Mm -hmm. um, Shea Moisture is a great brand to start with because they have tons and tons of different lines for different hair types. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, once you have that down and have fun with it. Like that's yes. why I, I think it's fun to experiment with products. Uh, I'm a product junkie. <laughs> yeah, I, you don't want to see under my sink. Like I don't mind spending <laughs> money on products. Because I think it's fun, and uh -huh. I think, you know, exploring that mm -hmm. helps you explore yourself. So, right, yeah. right, and it's a beautiful thing. And then the Shea Moisture also has um, sulfate-free, all yeah. that, so mm -hmm. that's important too, right? Yes, um, learning about the ingredients. So, yeah, mm -hmm. sulfate-free, paraben-free, um, and I'll say that on the bottles, but mm -hmm. those are some chemicals that you don't necessarily want in your hair mm -hmm. because curly hair is drier than straight hair mm -hmm. so you want to make sure you're always putting moisture into your hair right and checking out your porosity i think too yes, that's huge that's something that definitely um 
made a difference for me. I have mm -hmm. low porosity hair, which mm -hmm. basically just means the pores on my hair strands are kind of closed. Mm -hmm. So I need heat, like warm water or steamers to open them up mm -hmm. so moisture can get inside. Yes, me yeah. too, for sure. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> well, we'll be right back after this short break and we'll find out what makes LaToya Dove an unsung hero. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Chrissy Morales, the producer and host of Unsung Heroes. This show that aims to inspire, educate, and empower our community. We have the power to light up your world. Come and join the movement. Welcome back to Unsung Heroes. We're here with curly influencer Latoya Dove. Hey. Okay. Latoya, you're having so much fun talking about curls. I am. I love talking about hair. I know, me too. I can literally talk on forever about curls. But one of the questions that we like to ask here on the show mm -hmm. is, what do you think makes an unsung hero? Mm. So I think what makes an unsung hero is somebody that puts others' needs before them, mm -hmm. before their own, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that, you know, they're doing some form of service to their community, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, like volunteer service or mm -hmm. In my case, I feel like my service that I do for my community is empowering people mm -hmm. and just encouraging them to be their selves. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with the way that you were born, nothing wrong with the way that God made you. So I think, you know, I would say that's what makes me an unsung hero is that, you know, I want to give out a positive message to my community. Yes, and you definitely do. So thank you for being an unsung hero. Don't you guys agree? <laughs> And Latoya, you've been doing such great things. Let's take it back to how we met. Yes. Because <laughs> it, it, this wouldn't even be possible if, if we hadn't met the way we did. Yes. And that was at a Love & Lux event. Yes, that was, um, I believe it was the Are You The One um, entrepreneurship event for Love & Lux, mm -hmm. which is a company that was started by my very good friend, Shakira Brown. Mm -hmm. And Love & Lux is all about empowering young black women in um, the collegiate, you know, realm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I was very excited and thankful to be a part of that team. I was the um, director of marketing and social strategy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just being able to see how Shakira grew the business. It started as a blog, and then now she actually has a chapter at Rowan. Mm -hmm. um, That's so, so cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing to see, like, how it's transformed. And mm -hmm. I was really thankful to be a part of that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and with doing Love & Lux, we did a lot of events. And so so I really fell in love with events more than I, I mean, I always liked them, but mm -hmm. I realized like, I think I might want to incorporate events curation into my career. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm really thinking about as I, you know, branch out and try new things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that you're doing that already, you know, especially with your podcast and bringing yeah. in different people that takes coordination. Yes, <laughs> a lot of planning, um, uh -huh. and I would love to have an event come out of the podcast, so yeah. I don't know, maybe 2020, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we could do like a curly team up. Yes, I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> I love it, I love the whole curl talk, and you yes. guys did do a curl event, right, with Love & Love? We did, we had um, Curl Boss, where we mm -hmm. had a panel, mm -hmm. um, and brought in some influencers, and they shared their experiences and gave tips to the audience, so that was really great. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So we, let's take it back to your podcast. Yes. Right? You're doing Bills, Curls, and Color Girls. Yes. Tell me, now we talked about the curls. Tell me yes. about the Bills a little bit and, yes. you know, uh -huh. how to go about all that. So that is actually going to be an upcoming episode, which I'm super excited about, trying to coordinate it now. Cool. Um, so hopefully by the time you guys see this, it'll be out and you can check it out. Mm -hmm. But I think um, one of the big misconceptions about being a millennial is that we need to be traveling and taking all these cute pictures and all mm -hmm. these countries on Instagram mm -hmm. and you look you're looking and it's like how are these people affording this because the I'm the same age as you and I can't go anywhere but down the street mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I really want to have an episode where I bring in a financial advisor to talk about Love saving that. credit and like how to prepare for you know, adult, adult life yes. when you're in your 20s. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So it's that. like the financial adulting 101. Yes, yes. Especially with budgeting. I mean, right. I actually taught a financial literacy class in one of the community mm -hmm. um, workshops. Mm -hmm. And Dave, I think it's Dave Ramsey is his name. Okay. But like he makes you break down all your money and like put it in one thing. But it's like the more that I go day to day and right. doing things, it's like you forget about your budget. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, it's hard to keep track of like every dollar that you're spending. Mm -hmm. You know, you have bills, you have groceries, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I really want to bring in someone that's going to be able to give us some um, insight onto how you can do that in a manageable way. Mm -hmm. And then especially credit is so important. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I think unfortunately for a lot of us, we don't start 
building credit until after we graduate. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you are in that situation, you know, how can you quickly, you know, mm -hmm. build up your credit so you can, you know, buy a car, get mm -hmm. an apartment, mm -hmm. get a loan for maybe a business you want to start, you know, right. different things like that. Yeah, and I see that a lot of the challenges is the credit issue. Mm -hmm. With a lot of students that are just graduating, there yes. is so much debt, they can't even buy yes. a home. No. <laughs> that is an issue that needs yes. to be addressed. And I think that we definitely will be addressing it some more. We'll yeah. be bringing in some more people to kind of figure this out. You know, mm -hmm. I think that there should be like some kind of workshop where um, young homeowners and people just graduating, how they can go about building their credit, don't right. you think? Because it's like... Especially while you're trying to pay off student loans. Like mm -hmm. while you have this huge debt, how can mm -hmm. you manage that? But then also, you know, create credit and financial wealth. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely so there's a lot on going that. on in, you know, a young person. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in your mind, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that your show is really awesome because you're touching on those topics yeah. that aren't normally talked about. Right. You know, people just internalize it all. Yes, that's the thing too. I notice, and you can tell how that... Um, affects people when they internalize like mm -hmm. the issues that they have mm -hmm. and I'm just like we need to just get that all out because that also plays into mental health when you internalize mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. you think that you're the only one going through it right. you feel like something's wrong with you right. it's like no we're all going through the same thing mm -hmm. so it's better for us to just talk about it and then figure out how to fix it yeah, yeah for sure and I see a lot of young people posting on social media you know that they have depression or mm -hmm. that they have anxiety or like just crying for help, mm -hmm. you know? Do you think that um, a workshop would help them or where can they find resources for that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I think definitely, you know, workshops within communities, especially if uh, they're still currently a college student, mm -hmm. colleges have so many resources for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then honestly, what's helped me is listening to the podcast. Like I, just to roll off like some of my favorite, there's one mm -hmm. called Get, Getting Grown. Mm -hmm. And that one like really helped me realize mm -hmm. that like, it's okay to be struggling. Um, uh -huh. The hosts are in their thirties, like mid, thir mid to late thirties. And I'm like, oh, they're still going through that. Like, right. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> so I think just like bringing in positive messages, whether yes. it's through podcasts, books, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, through your daily life can really help you. Yeah, for sure. Well, Latoya, yeah. we are having such a fun time here with yes. you today. And I'm you are doing so a great, fun. you're just doing amazing things in our community Thank you. to help young people and people who are struggling. So we want to honor you and award you oh. with an Unsung <laughs> Heroes Award. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Latoya. You've just been such a blessing. And I know that you're going to be doing amazing things. I can't wait to go to your Curly events. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, and hopefully, you know, I'll be listening in to your financial literacy yes. classes that you'll be having on there. That's going to be great. I think it'll be great. Thank you. So what are some final uh, words of advice you could give to the youth and people just graduating college, how they can go about and really manage at all the the obstacles mm -hmm. that they're going through? Um, I think the most important thing is just to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, like we were saying, like not to internalize those um, feelings that you have because you'll be surprised how many other people, whether it's your friends or maybe an older cousin that went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just talking about it and trying to uh, work with people to come up with a plan to you know help you out. For sure. Yeah. And where can they find you on social media if they want to reach out to you? Um, so on Instagram, you can find me at Latoya underscore Diana. And on YouTube, Latoya Diana. Mm -hmm. uh, where else am I? <laughs> uh, my Instagram for my podcast is Bill's Curls Colored Girls, mm -hmm. as well as Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you just type in Bill's Curls, I'll pop up. <laughs> with the, with yes. the, with the. <laughs> You'll see my face. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Latoya. You've been an, a blessing having you on thank the show. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Until next time, this is Chrissy Morales with Unsung Heroes Curls Edition. Woo, let's take some selfies. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pop out the selfie stick. <laughs> Love it.